we celebrate today the feast of Saint John de Brito of the Society of Jesus. And the reason why it is a special celebration in India is because John de Brito spent all of his life as a Jesuit in India. He was born in the year 1647 and died in the year 1693 when he was only 46 years of age. He did not die of any illness. He did not die of a sickness, but he died because he was martyred. And the reason why he was martyred was because he dared to stand up for the truth. And he stood up for the truth primarily by standing up for the poor. Because he did that, the rich people were unable to accept him. The rich people did not like that John de Brito was reaching out to the poor, informing them of their rights and telling them that they were as much loved by God and as much worthy of the kingdom of God as anyone else. He was able to restore the self-esteem in the poor. He was able to reach out to them practically by educating them, by reaching out to them with rations and with food and with physical aid as well. His mission to the poor was not merely a verbal proclamation, it was also shown tangibly in action through his reaching out. Because of this, John de Brito became very, very popular among the downtrodden, the marginalized and the outcast. However, he was not as popular with the rich and those who wanted the poor to remain poor. And that is why there was a time when they could not stand it any longer. And because they could not do that, they made sure that John de Brito would be killed. He was killed in the year 1693. His head was decapitated in our own country, India, in Oriyur, in Madurai. Today, 400 years later, we are still inspired by this wonderful saint. And the readings of today are basically a summary of the kind of person that John de Brito was. In the first reading, taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 19 to 27, like Paul, so many years before him, John de Brito also became all things to all people. When he came into India, he did not come dressed as a Westerner, but he adopted the Indian dress and the Indian custom and the Indian rituals. He became exactly like everyone was. He was one of those who inculturated himself so perfectly by learning the language, by learning the rituals, by adopting the dress and by adopting the food that he soon became one of the people. This is also what Paul did before him. And Paul says in the first reading of today, though he is free, he does what he does in order to reach out to people. In the gospel text of today, which is taken from the gospel of John chapter 12, verses 20 to 32, we are given the first glimpse into the main mission of Jesus, that is, Jesus death and resurrection. The coming of the Greeks is an indication of the coming of the world or the unbelieving world to Jesus. And this is a turning point in the Gospel of John. John begins the Gospel text of today by telling us, now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. When Jesus heard 
that they wish to see him. This was the response of Jesus. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it bears much fruit. Only if it dies. If it remains alone, it does not bear fruit. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And this can be seen as a passion and resurrection prediction in the Gospel of John. Jesus now knows the coming of the Greeks is the coming of the unbelieving world to him. And Jesus is very clear that he has come not for a select few. He has come not to be a parochial Lord. He has come not to be a restricted or a narrow-minded Lord. He has come for the entire universe. And that is why when the Greeks come, an indication that the world is coming to Jesus is also an indication that now the hour has come for Jesus to show his love for the entire world by dying on the cross and also by being raised again. John de Brito, in imitation of his master, was able to adopt this same attitude, the attitude of being available to the whole world and of being unafraid to die for the truth, to stand up for the right and to give his life in serving the poor. Today, on the Feast of John de Brito, we need to ask ourselves if each one of us in our own small way will reach out to at least one poor person today. A very happy feast of John de Brito, of the Society of Jesus. God bless you 